This little light of mine, yeah, yeah. Tell it all the time. Jesus changed my mind, yeah, yeah. My father broke all the chains, bringing reality so they could change, yeah. To the whole world ain't the same. Ready, fire, aim, yeah, yeah. Ain't no time for survival, uh. House to house, this revival, uh. Cause my God is alive and church is still thriving. Come catch the vibe, uh. Get your family, three friends. Let's get your neighbor this the weekend. However, 2020 will end. We about to tell the devil we win. Hello, everybody. Thank you again for joining us tonight. I'm Chris Purnell. I'm program director with the North Carolina Council of Churches, and I am um, co-convener with the Faith Health Caucus of the North Carolina Medicare for All Coalition. It's a very long title. Um, if you're not familiar with the North Carolina Medicare for All Coalition, I'm going to drop a link in the chat box and would love for you to check that out. But basically, we are over 40 groups who have been working together to really one goal, to make sure that all human beings can receive basic health care. We know that it's possible, and we believe that the way to achieve this is through the expansion and improvement of the program that's already in place, Medicare. So we work for Medicare for All. And we believe that anything less than that still leaves way too many people out and it still privileges profit over people. So I did post the website. We have lots of personal stories, lots of data, even budgets to show how this can be paid for and lots of ways to get involved. But tonight we're focusing on uh, the caucus within the big group, the Faith Health Caucus. And we are simply people of faith who believe that healthcare is a human right. We know that our people are suffering. We know that people are dying for lack of healthcare. And we believe that it is our responsibility to work to change that. We all hear the numbers, we see the headlines, especially since COVID. Um, 600,000 working North Carolinians going without health insurance. North Carolina has the ninth highest rate of uninsured in the nation with over a million people without health care. And those are headlines, those are numbers, but we know that behind those numbers are people who are created in God's image and we want to work for change. So basically we're a group that are pretty new. We just formed this year and we're just rolling up our sleeves. We're holding prayer vigils. This is the first. And um, we're writing to our legislators. We're presenting information, answering questions. Um, doing presentations in our sanctuaries, holding events, and continuing to learn together. We meet once a month, and tonight we're going to start uh, with prayer, and we are going to invite you to join us in this effort going forward in any way that you may be led. And to start us off tonight, I would like to introduce the person who reminds us often that prayer can move mountains, and that this is where we need to start. 
the Reverend Dr. Floyd Wicker. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Chris. Good evening to all. I am Reverend Dr. Floyd Wicker, founder of the People's Fellowship of North Carolina. And I would like to thank first and foremost, the Medicare for All Coalition and the Faith Health Caucus for their gift of friendship, <clears throat> excuse me, and their gift of partnership and the development of what I believe is the beloved community. We are here tonight because we all share a common belief. We believe that all of God's children are created in the image and likeness of God. And as a result, we believe that in the richest country in the history of the world, none of God's children, conservative or liberal, progressive or evangelical, none should go without having access to quality health care. None should be forced. No one should be forced to choose between paying rent, paying their utility bills, or paying for the medicine they need to survive. We are here because we are deeply saddened by the reality that in our beloved state of North Carolina, there are upwards of, as Chris just mentioned, 600,000 residents who are currently without health coverage. That's over 600,000 people whose lives are made worse by their lack of access to health care. Once again, we are looking at a state budget that still does not expand Medicaid to those who are, need, are in need. Once again, we are having to make the case, we're having to urge our lawmakers in Raleigh to do what is morally just. This ought not to be. So tonight we are here to pray for those barriers that stand in the way of health justice. We are here to pray for the removal of discrimination, supremacy, fear, and oppression in our political systems and institutions. We are here tonight to stand in solidarity for much needed social change. So I ask you friends tonight the question, is this a moment when faith leaders can come together and facilitate justice and righteousness in our state and even in our country? Is this a time for us to come together in love, in togetherness, in unity, in peace? I hope, I certainly hope so. So I say to you tonight, welcome to the Faith Health Caucus of the North Carolina Medicare for All Coalition. Let us pray. God of many names, we thank you for the women and men that you have brought together this evening. We thank you, dear Lord, for the purposes of our gathering. We pray, God, that your will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. Gracious God, we need the power of your love. We need the power of your spirit to accomplish our ultimate goals. We thank you for each faith leader that is uh, represented tonight. We thank you for their constituencies. We thank you for their congregations. And we ask and pray God for their gifts and graces to come along with us, with you, that we all might be co-laborers for justice and righteousness in our state, but also in our world. We give thanks to you tonight, amen. Hallways of power, they answered your call. 
call Now it's our turn to do justice Humbly we rise to the day Give us the strength and the wisdom to walk in your way Gather the loaves and the fishes Share until all have been fed Walk in compassion and mercy by love will be led Standing in circles surrounding All holding hands while we pray When powers bend down on the helpless we'll stand in the way be healed by the truth when doorways are blocked we will lower our friends through the roof god of the circle that holds us god of the ones pushed away we will reach out to our neighbors and your name will say no matter your creed or your country No matter the hue of your skin Your age, who you love, or the body Your soul was born in No matter the places you're broken No matter the things you have done Lay down that weight on the altar A new day has begun Kingdom, we welcome you home. Join us in work of the kingdom, we welcome you Hi everyone, I'm Julie No Smith, a member of the Faith Health Caucus. We're very grateful everyone who joined tonight to pray together. Especially we thank um, the faith leaders who will lead prayers and candle lightings. I will call the names of the leaders for each subject in pairs. So first we pray for faith, Reverend Dr. Byron Wade and Rabbi Dr. Seth Clayman. Let us pray. Lord, truly you are good and you are always worthy to be praised and blessed is your name. We thank you, O oh Lord, as we are gathered here in this time and in this place, Lord. We thank you for the faith that has sustained our mothers and our fathers and our siblings and our beloved that has been passed down to us as we continue to carry it out. We also give you thanks for you are the creator, sustainer, and redeemer of the entire word and world. Lord, most of all, we thank you for the gift of health. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to move and to have our being. But Lord, we know it's not always that way. And there are many people who are suffering right now from their health and who are seeking help. Lord, we want to, I do believe to address the health needs of all. But Lord, we have fallen short. We have not done what you've called us to do. We are not taking care of our neighbors and we are neglecting the health of others because of political and other divisions. Lord, forgive us. Lord, help us to turn away from those things that divide us, but help us, Lord, and this time through the faith that you have given us that we may truly enact that faith to take care of all those who don't have adequate health, for all those who can't get to places, for all those who live in communities that there are no health places even around them. Lord, help us most of all through the Holy Spirit and through our faith that we will work for those who don't have 
and that we would have equity across all for those who are suffering from health issues. Help us, Lord, to be just in our rulings. Help us, Lord, to be just in our actions. Help us, Lord, to be just in the laws that we make and move all those who need to be moved, whether lawmakers, whether policymakers, and even, Lord, change our hearts that we may not look out for those that we know, but, Lord, we may bring health and wellness and well-being to those who don't have. It is our faith, Lord, that you have given us to act upon and help us, Lord, not just to say it, but to do it. And help us, Lord, that once we have helped those who are lacking in health, to bring them to a new reality, that whatever they are going through, they are not going through alone, but they are walking with them. And help us, Lord, that we may begin to be just people within the world, that we may have health care for all, and that we may truly celebrate the bodies that you've given us, that we may glorify you. And Lord, I ask for these and other blessings. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope, Reverend Adrian Bullock, Reverend Spencer Rutherford. Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, let's go before the throne of grace. Almighty God, we thank you for this day that you have allowed us to see. Thank you, God, for the gift of life and health and strength. God, even in the midst of this conversation, we realize that you are our loving God and our loving Father. A loving Father that hears your children when we call on you. So God, we come now in this space, those that have been called out to share your good news and to fight for the rights of those who are in need. Come, God, in hope, believing, God, that the sun will shine, God, that you will shine a light in the midst of darkness within our world, uh, that will, truth will forever be lifted up within our world and society, God. We pray now for uh, the passage of different legislation, God, so that your people can be blessed and have for them the things that they need to survive. God, we lift up each other, even in this holiday season. God, we ask for your will and your way in this world, in this place. Bless us, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good evening. I'm happy to be with this assembly online tonight. I was reminded earlier today that uh, uh, soon we'll be coming upon the uh, 10th anniversary of the death of Václav Havel, a uh, Czech playwright and uh, activist dissident against authoritarianism in his home country and elsewhere, who spent some years in prison before he attained freedom and was eventually elected elected president of his country and he after he had spent some years in prison um he uh he he wrote something about hope that had grown within him during his time of of imprisonment uh Havel wrote hope is a state of mind not of the world either we have hope or we don't it is a dimension of the soul, and it's not essentially dependent on some particular observation of the world or some estimate of the situation. Hope is not pro prognostication. It, it is in an orientation of the spirit, an orientation of the heart. It transcends the world that is immediately experienced, and it is anchored somewhere beyond its horizons. Hope in this deep and powerful sense is not the same as joy that things are going well or willingness to invest in enterprises that are obviously headed toward success, but it's rather an ability to work for something because it is good, not just because it stands a chance to succeed. The more propitious the situation in which we demonstrate hope, the deeper the hope is. Hope is definitely not the same thing as optimism. It is not the conviction that something will turn out well, 
but the certainty that something makes sense, regardless of how it turns out. These words have been resonating with me as we've watched another opportunity pass by our state legislature to expand Medicaid, to make health care services and treatment as available for more of our neighbors on the margins struggling to make ends meet as it is for the more secure and successful members of our community. There is, this has not been a propitious uh, month in North Carolina for expanding health care, but that does not mean that hope diminishes. If anything, it summons out, as Hobble wrote, a stronger hope. It calls forth for more hope. It is uh, hope, as I heard someone once say, is acting in spite of the evidence and watching the evidence change. That is the hope that we are called to practice, especially in these days when, when the action for greater equity in healthcare, uh, greater sharing of, of treatment resources is, uh, is frustrating is daunting. It is in these moments where hope must be summoned forth even more so. As we've heard, as, as uh, many of you may also recall, the Irish poet Seamus Haney wrote about these moments of struggle and contention in his uh, great poem on Troy when he said, history says, don't hope on this side of the grave, but then once in a lifetime, the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. So hope for a great sea change. Believe that a further shore is reachable from here. Let hope carry us toward that further shore of greater equity and mutual care for one another tonight and in the days ahead. And God bless you. Thank you. Humanity, Reverend Fanta Lenson, Minister Wesley Morris. Beloved, I invite you to posture your hearts before the Lord as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, you are good and your mercy endures forever. God, you are great and greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Oh Lord, you are worthy of all praise and glory. God, you hem us in in the front and in the back, on every side, your love surrounds us, your mercy overtakes us, God, your strength undergirds us, your grace carries us every day of our lives, and God, we just say thank you for the opportunity to come to your throne of grace to uh, petition, oh God, to you. You are a strong God. You're able to do all things, oh Lord, so we come to you knowing that if we pray that you will hear our prayers and you will incline your ear to us. And when you do, oh Lord, then you will answer. Oh yes, you will answer according to your will, according to your power, according to your authority that reigns down in this earth, oh God, as you walk with us and as you talk with us. So God, we submit unto you the petitions for your beloved. We thank you that you call us Beloved, we thank you, O oh God, that you call us your children, created in diversity of gifts, of races, of nationalities, of sexual orientation, joined together to glorify and magnify your name. God, we pray and we ask that you will care for the things that concern us, that you will perfect those things that concern us. God, we pray that peace rain down in this world, that we would be agents of peace, that 
peace would rain down over our federal and local, the state and city and state government, in our schools, the welfare for our children, to make sure every child has what they need to thrive, oh God. We pray for Congress to pass the extension of the improved child tax credit so that families will continue to have support monthly. God, and we pray that you would repair the healthcare system. Use us as agents, ambassadors of Christ that have been sent out into this world so that we may be those who ensure more people can get and stay insured with equity and quality care for all, regardless of race or ability to pray. God, we pray that you would remove oppressive systems within the structures of our health care, that you would remove uh, oppressive and uh, discriminatory structures and mindsets from people, oh God, so that everyone would find justice. Yes, justice would roll down, oh God, within this world as we are working for justice. May the things that break your heart break ours and may we be moved to seek after this justice, oh God, that you are all about. May the elderly get the care that they need. May people with developmental disabilities and those living with cancer or HIV and AIDS or chronic diseases or diabetes or heart disease, Lord, may they all receive the care, the rightful care that they need so that they too may thrive, oh Lord. Oh, bless and heal and employ thoughtful, dedicated, loving and caring nurses and doctors and administrators to care for all children, for the elderly, for all of your beloved of humanity, that at the end of the day that we may remember that we are your beloved and from the words of Howard Thurman, may we remember that you are with us in the sense that you are the creator and the sustainer of life. God, we remember that you are with us all around us in certain expressions of orderliness, of beauty, of wonder and delight, the regularity of sunrise and sunset, the fragile loveliness of a wisp of cloud fringed with silver, the wonder of day dawning. God, may we remember that you are with us. Again and again, we will say that you are with us, O oh Lord. Your kindness is walking with us and your wisdom is talking to us and your courage uh, to move forward in justice is walking with us and reminding us that we have more than what we need because you are with us to move forward and fight for justice and keep moving forward and don't get weary oh God because you are with us God may we know in the deep recesses of our soul that you are calling us to continue the fight and at the end of the day oh God may we know that you are in control you are in control of it all God you are with us and if you are with us, it is more than anything against us. So we give you glory and we give you praise. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Reverend Fanta. That prayer was calling the role that we all need to have deeply written on the tablet of our heart. I won't be before you long. I am so thankful to just share a word on humanity tonight. Humanity. Our humanity is not disposable. If I've learned anything, the first lesson of the beloved community is to honor and respect the dignity, worth, and value of human life. At the core of our, of our strivings, of our hope, as we've heard, is this essential word that I would name and have, would, would not define, but I can at least talk about it, which is love. Love is not on the sidelines in the struggle for, for healthcare. James Baldwin dictates a definition or at least strings together a few sentences and says that love does not begin or end in the way that we think it does. Love is a battle, love is a war, love is growing up. And I would be remiss if I didn't remark and, and name Toni Morrison, who, who, who also wrote, wrote powerfully on the word love, who said, love is or it ain't. Because a thin love ain't no love at all. 
And in this struggle for our humanity, which is not and never has been disposable, we are to confront and engage powers and principalities which are diametrically opposed to our genesis and our revelation. We are to struggle from the margins to the core because they don't make different human beings in the walls of Congress than they do in Greensboro, North Carolina. There's not a different kind of human being made on the continent of Africa or even in the hillsides of Rayford, North Carolina. There is within us this common core, this unity in the diversity of our humanity, which draws us to a question. Where do we go from here? My prayer is that our nights and our days not only come together at the meeting of sunset and sunrise, but that we find ourselves able to walk into what is called an apocalyptic darkness. Humanity has been on this precipice before, and now my words of prayer go to the shepherd and say, lead us beside and into the still darkness into the beginning of a season that is coming that is called Advent, the place of preparation, when the world condemns our effort to reveal the true life of our humanity, draw us near one to another. Whisper to us in our divine communion, reminders of who you are and who we are. In this season, we are seeking the gentle care of your instruction, open and available to find a simple peace. You are our best guide in these times. So teach us to hold our concerns in community with beloved speech and listening. Our hearts, though tossed and turned, find refuge in your complete shadow. Oh God, hear our prayer. Lead us beside and into the still darkness. For your word truly does heal the multitude of harms. And tonight our words are lifting up the need for the bending of ears, the bending of swords into plowshares. Count us among those that come and convene for the best of us, which is the common good. May we win and may we prevail in our struggle for the beloved community. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Health, Reverend Joe Blankenship, Chaplain Annette Olson. Let's pray. Gracious God, you are the source of all healing. You heal the sick and you mend the broken. And so we seek that health that you offer for all people. Especially tonight, we pray for those who suffer from COVID. Attend to their needs, we pray, with all your healing love. We pray for your touch, your calming, settling hand to be upon them. We pray for their families who suffer alongside of them. As Isaiah proclaimed, so we pray, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble needs. Say to those who are a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. Bless all who work for healing, O God. Enhance their skills, deepen their understanding, and through their ministry to those who suffer, may they be restored to fullness of health. We ask that you strengthen us all with wellness and faith. Strengthen us with courage and the abilities to be servants of your realm. May we be bearers of wholeness to those who struggle for health care. Oh God, you desire health and wholeness for all creation. Toward that end, we pray with confidence and in hope that what we read in Revelation will come to pass. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. May it be so in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Joe, for that message of abundance. Giving honor to God, who is the source and strength of our life together, and giving honor to the work of uh, my sisters in theology, uh, Ada Maria Asasi Diaz, God rest her soul. Uh, she emphasized kingdom over kingdom. As we heard in the song earlier, kingdom over kingdom, justice over imperialism, equity over discrimination. I want to give honor to her work and that message of kingdom, along with the messages given by Amy Hunter who in her TED Talks and other kinds of conversations around race equity, invites us all to love one another. And she calls it, fall in love with one another. She invites us to fall in love with one another, the kind of love that you want to wake up to. The kind of love that when someone walks in the door, your heart smiles. That kind of love that we experience we feel that kind of kinship with one another. That's what inspired me to write this today. Health. Health is. Health is our nature. Health is love embodied as a people. One humanity living with dignity and determination in balance with all that is here and now. Ill health requires interference, active blockages, the withholding of that which we each need to be well. Fresh and clean water for drinking and bathing. Freshly prepared foods that with vibrant colors, delicate tastes, hardiness, and micronutrients for growth and sustenance. Love, a sense of belonging and kinship, shelter from life's storms, experiences of purpose, passion, and peace. Health is loving our neighbor as ourselves, as well as not doing to others as we would not want done to us. Barriers arise or are placed when we forget who we are and whose we are in the circle, on the wheel, this earth. When we forget we are one kin in the kingdom of love. When we forget injuries occur and accrue in families and schools and systems throughout our world. In the words of the many, kingdom of love on earth, health is love for all. And all means every body. Healthcare for all means love every body. All for one and one for all. Let us pray healthcare for all. Let us live one love for all. And in the words of the song earlier, let us join the work of the kingdom as we welcome one another home to health as love. Now, blessed be.
Thank you. Next, love. Deacon Sally Simpson, Imam Abdul Wahid. Let us pray. Holy God, we are thankful that you are a loving, gracious God, that you've offered us forgiveness and the gift of new life in you. Your love is perfect. It never fails and that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray that our lives will be filled with the power of your love so we can make a difference in this world and bring honor to you. We ask for your help in reminding us that the most important thing we can do in this life is simply to love you and to choose to love others. Your love is patient. Help us show patience with those around us. Your love is kind. Help us to extend kindness to others. True love is not jealous. Help us cast aside feelings of jealousy or hatred towards others. Your love does not brag and is not arrogant. Help us not to live with pride or arrogance, but choose to walk with humility and grace. True love does not act unbecomingly. Help us to extend kindness instead of rudeness towards others. Help us to lay aside the critical tone and tearing down with our words so that we can truly walk in peace. True love is not provoked. Lord, help us not to become easily angered. Help us not to be so reactive, but instead slow to speak and slow to become angry. Your love does not take into account a wrong suffered. Help us not to hold grudges, but to choose to forgive even when it's difficult. Your love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Thank you that your love never fails. Help us to love as you love. Fill us with your spirit so that we can choose what is best. We are weak, Lord, but we know also that even when we are weak, you are strong within us. Thank you that it is not all up to us. Thank you that you equip us to face each day with the power of your love, your forgiveness, and your grace. Amen. I don't think Deacon, uh, I don't think Imam Abdul Wahid is with us tonight. So, uh, okay. Julie, if, you, if you'd like to move on. Okay. So, Thanksgiving, Reverend Dr. Rodney Coles, Dr. Michelle Ong. Oh, Heavenly Father, we truly want to thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, your kindness, God, for just who you are, God, and what you've done and continue doing in our life, God. We, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, that died, that we could be here today, Lord, forgiving us for our sins, God. We ask you, God, right now to continue uh, uh, leading us and guiding us and directing us and ordering our step, Heavenly Father. We pray right now, Lord, and just thanking you, Lord, for just the direction that you have already given us, God. We we thankful, Lord, for being here today. We thank you, Lord, for this conference this afternoon, this evening, that you allow us to be here, Lord, just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for just giving us, God, on, on ability to learn, ability of wisdom, the ability of continue seeking you for all directions, God. We just want to thank you, God, for, for, for your son Jesus that is here, Lord, in, in the spirit realm, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for as you continue giving us life and giving us directions, God, to continue moving forward, God, and, and, and thanking you, Lord, for just giving us that, 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 that directions, God, that we can continue, Lord, looking up on the hill what comes our help, God. We thank you, Lord, 
for just who you are. We thank you, God, and as you continue giving us, God, the, the understanding, God, of, of, of love and understanding of hope and understanding of faith and understanding of, of health and directions, God. We thank you for those who are in the power to do what is right, God, and we, we just thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, as we continue, Lord, to take our time and spend that time and relationship with you, God. We give it all to you, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, as we continue thanking us, God, for, for just allowing us to have that giving heart, Lord, to, to continue giving, God, to those who have need and those are lost and those are suffering, God, out here today, God. And we just thank you, God, right now. We give it all to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and we will say amen. Dear Lord, I am called to represent the medical community in giving thanks. For 30 years, I've practiced medicine, and I pray today with this group to give thanks for the past year and a half, the hardest in my medical career. We in healthcare give thanks for those in our towns, our states, our country, and our entire world that have stopped to support us and care. I give thanks for the doctors and providers in Peru and other countries around the world who text or call or WhatsApp to see how we in the US are faring with this pandemic. It makes the fit world feel as one. I give thanks for the friend who volunteered to trial the vaccine when we had no idea the personal side effects it may take. It makes me remember to think of others over ourselves. I gave, I give thanks for the researchers who have made the vaccine, discovered the vaccine, and it makes me aware and thankful for human intelligence. I give thanks for the families that have fed us, prayed for us, hug a, hugged us when we've been on the front lines. It reminds us of our love and devotion. I give thanks for the friends who stopped to draw on our driveways with chalk to send notes of thanks and support. It reminds us that we're all connected as one. I am thankful for our lives. It reminds us of our creator. And I'm thankful to our God who gives us the strength, the inner compass, and the love to carry us through these difficult times. It reminds me that God is love. In this we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Ong, for your service. Care and concern, Reverend Rob Jackson, Reverend Cheryl Walker. If Reverend Rob Jackson is not here, we still we would like to uh, open the space for someone that's here that would like to pray. If not, we can go to Reverend Cheryl Walker to have her statement. Let us begin with a short prayer. Eternal spirit of life and love known to us by many names, different expression, perhaps dear God. We have gathered this evening people of different faith communities with one purpose. The purpose of finding health care for everyone. Not for the few, but for everyone. And so in this time, let us all remember to open our hearts to one another, to open our proverbial hands to one another, to open our minds to one another, and in the end, to do the work of justice. In the name of all that is holy, Amen. 
this evening, there are people from so many different faith traditions, and we don't pray in the same way. We don't use the same words. Some pray to Allah, some pray to Jesus, some pray to Adonai. We do not read the same books. Some find wisdom in the Quran, some find wisdom in the Torah, some find wisdom in the New Testament. Whatever our faith traditions are, there is something that they all have in common. And that is a call for compassion. All faith traditions have at their core a call for us to be compassionate. And what is compassion if not care and concern that leads to action? So this evening, let us express our care for the 1,000 people who are hospitalized with COVID tonight and concern for those who are wondering how they will pay the astronomical hospital bill because they do not have insurance. Let us express care for the families of the 18,000 North Carolinian families who have lost someone to COVID. Let us have concern for those families as they struggle through the days, wondering how will they put food on their table, roofs over their heads. Let us have care for the 1.5 million people in this state alone who have suffered with COVID and concern for those who are afraid to go find out if they do, because if they do, they may lose their work, they may lose their livelihoods, they may lose their homes, so they suffer. Care and concern for all of our friends, all of our neighbors, care and concern for the stranger, care and the concern for every person because we are all part of one interdependent web of existence. And if something hurts one, it hurts us all. And it dishonors the inherent worth and dignity of every person, the divine light residing in each of us. But care and concern are not enough. Because true care and true concern must end in action. We must show our concern and our care, not through words, not through prayers, but through actions to get busy, to take care of each other in any way that we can, to move our legislators to change our systems to show care and concern for every one of us. It is well and good that we pray, but in the end, prayer alone will not change people, change anything. Prayer changes people. It changes us. It opens our hearts. It commands us to go out and do the work of our God. Prayer changes people. People change things, and things need to change. Amen. Last but not least, peace. Reverend Dr. T. Anthony Spearman, Reverend Robert Hudak, 
if uh, Reverend Spearman is not on, we'll move to Reverend Hudak. No, uh, excuse me, if uh, Dr. Rodney Sattler, he can take uh, Reverend uh, Spearman's place and share his and then Reverend Hudak, that'll be fine. Good evening. It's wonderful to be with you all this evening as we talk about issues of health care. I am called to pray for the issue of health care for all, universal health care, the notion that we are all entitled to access to health care. We look at Jesus and Jesus talks about healing the sick. We look at the Old Testament and Moses and Elijah are figures that have been involved in healing. Healing is clearly on God's mind. When I look at the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, one of the things that impresses me most of all is in that glorious vision of all people gathered behind, be around God's throne. One of the things that we see is that people from every nation, every kind, every people, every tongue will be there gathered celebrating God. What that says in the Greek, that's the term pantos, which means all, that God is concerned for all people, that all people are important to God, that what happens to all people is significant. As we think about who deserves access to health care, who deserves access in North Carolina to Medicaid, which has been denied to more than 500,000 people, which leaves more than 600,000 people without health care, more than the population of the city of Raleigh. When we think about the need for Medicare for all people, that everyone have, would have equal access, we realize what God has on God's heart, that we all should be blessed. Let's look to the Lord and make this entreaty of God. Holy One, we are grateful to you that you care for all people, that your limit of affection is not just for those who are wealthy enough to afford adequate health care, not just for those who have good enough jobs to have Cadillac health care programs, that your concern is not just for people of one skin color or one religious type, but your concern is for all people. May all your people be able to have the health care that they need when they are in their hardest times, to help them back from illness, to help them back from the pain and suffering of long-term disability, to help them as they wrestle with mental health issues, concerns we often take for granted as they deal with issues of addiction. Lord, there's so many things that plague us and even when we are well, may you keep us whole and may we have health care that provides an opportunity for wellness. Lord, we know that you are a God who is able, so even in the midst of a time when we have recalcitrance in our governing agencies, a federal government that refuses to move towards Medicare for all, thinking that Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, is fine enough. Congress, half of which is divided, trying to undermine even that level of health care. We know that you are a God who is able to do above and beyond anything that we can ask. So we ask that you would open up the way that all people would be able to have access. Medicare for all, universal health care for all, opportunity for all people to have this basic human need met once and for again all. We come to you today saying we don't just want for ourselves, but we want to make sure that the best that we can enjoy can be enjoyed by all of your people. We are grateful to you for all that you do, Lord. We come to you by many names as we pray to you tonight, saying thank you because we know that you will act. Thank you because we know that you will do what seems impossible. Thank you because we know that you will deliver a victory as we ask for Medicare for all. We call on you by many names. I call on you in Jesus' name as we say amen. I now light the candle of peace. Mindful of the prayer, I first learned as a young man, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. 
which through the seasons of my life has become, Lord, make us instruments of your peace and justice. It's a prayer attributed to a 13th century disciple of Jesus, Francis of Assisi. And um, he would greet people with pace e bene, pace e bene, peace and wellness, peace and goodness. And while he is often seen in gardens and bird baths and perhaps uh, connected with nature, uh, with all creation, composed this hymn of the creatures, praise be my brother sun and sister moon, he saw a reflection of God's goodness in all creation and most especially in all people. But it took him going through a very challenging time in his life to come face to face with a very sick person, a very sick person. In those days, if you even had a bad skin disease that could look like, um, like leprosy, you were in a religious ceremony, uh, considered dead, the requiem mass, and people were expelled from, from their city-states. And as he writes in his memoir of one day walking through the Umbrian Valley, he came face to face with someone he saw who was a leper. And his first reaction was just throw some coins and run away, but he felt something stirring deep within him. He heard that small, still voice, which I don't suspect, which I know, not know in the sense of absolute certitude, but sense in all of the reflections that are being shared today and, and beyond with the, the network of people with whom we are trying to do our best to be a voice, uh, to not just be the voice that speaks, but as shared so profoundly in this, our gathering tonight, but to let our head, the thoughts of our head move to our hearts and to move our feet. And for Francis, he looked at the person with leprosy and he sensed and felt the presence of God. He saw the face of God. We talk about we are all created in God's image and God's likeness. He saw that light, that light was shining, that divine light was shining through this person who was very sick. And he gave him far more than the resources of some coins. He embraced him and he began to care in this community that came around him, the friars and sisters uh, began serving. I, I share this because I'm with Care for Carolina, the faith advisory group of working to close the coverage uh, in our state of the 600,000 that, that increased with the pandemic. And, um, in our first meeting and orientation, we were asked, what, what's the biggest obstacle do we think that we face? And I thought and thought and the inspiration came to me, what I learned years ago, uh, a Haitian proverb that still guides me like a light. And it's simply this, what the eye doesn't see doesn't move the heart. What the eye doesn't see doesn't move the heart. And that very same day, as I was driving on a major road in our hometown, Rodney and I's hometown, Pastor Cole's hometown of Greenville, I saw a man that I have passed many times with his sign and, and his little walker. And, you know, I was, I was embarrassed. Here I am, concerned about 600,000 people. I, parked and met him and Frank and I got to know each other and realized here is one of the 600,000 who's out on the street and, and seeking help while all of his efforts continue to somewhere sit in the bureaucracy of, of our, um, our system of, of health care. And so very simply, I encourage us to continue to listen, 
to that small, still voice that speaks to us, that light that's within us, um, and to try to continue to recognize that light in all our sisters and brothers, especially those that we are concerned about health. Pace e bene. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, we want to uh, bring on Mary White, and she's going to have a word of inspiration, be the light. I feel like Jesus, you know, when Jesus was with the disciples, he said, uh, could you not just wait uh, a few more, uh, pray with us, just stay, stay awake just a, a little while longer. So we ask you to hang in there with us just a little while longer. But think about this. In what we're doing, it's going to take a little sacrifice. It's going to take a little bit of more struggle. It's going to take for us to, to push just a little bit harder. And I, I like what uh, Spencer Bradford said. He talked about that hope and the deeper. I can't, I can't quote it. I want to get that, Spencer. Um, but he talked about the deeper that we need of this hope, uh, the more, I, I'm sorry, I missed a quote up. But I just encourage us to, to hang in there a little while longer because we're going somewhere. And, and actually, I'm a, I'm a spirit, I teach spiritual formation. So this, we're going to need a little uh, some formation in our spiritual uh, selves in order to get what we're after. So at this time, I'm sorry, uh, Mary White is going to uh, be with us uh, and share a word of inspiration. Thank you. Good evening. Um, not Dr. Wicker, I believe there was supposed to be a um, Closing. I mean, I saw him before me. I didn't know if you wanted to do the song before I began. No, I think we we're we're just going to move through with that. I'll begin with uh, my word of inspiration, which is entitled "Be the Light." Dear people of faith. Let us walk in the light, for our thoughts, deeds, and creeds must enlighten the world. Where there is darkness, death, and disillusionment, we must shed light. In a world full of grief, destruction, and danger, we must help show a clear path. Great Lord of the universe, Grant us that needed wisdom, faith, and light to place our feet on the most righteous pathway of life for those we may lead and unknown ones who may be following in our footsteps. So even we ourselves must become the light to encourage ourselves. Let us all say, be the light. Be the light. Be the light. Yes. As I rose Be this the light. Yes. Light. As I rose this morning to consider requirements for the day, I noticed a flickering of light as one of two ceiling light bulbs quickly extinguished. The dimness that ensued was rather displeasing, disoriented, and dispiriting. The significance of the need for light thus became seared into my soul. I remembered the spiritual provocation to walk in the light, to let our light shine before men, to place our light not under a bushel, but upon a lampstand where it gives light to all within the house to reference scripture. To encourage ourselves, let us all say, be the light. Be the light. Be the light. Be the light. 
Like, you can you lie. Right. From, from an earthquake in Haiti, a military upheaval in Afghanistan, the Delta virus raging all across our country, no hospital beds in several states, loss of so many lives in this nation of ours and around the world, wildfires in California, a building collapsing in Florida, lives lost in the rubble, malicious shootings and mayhem throughout our cities, we vow we must prevent such darkness from covering the world. This is a life-sustaining requirement. Mankind must foster more healthy social change. For each of these conditions will require a need for life-sustaining health care. We realize that if ever there was a time for those of us who strive to walk in the light and share our love, our caring, our work within the world, it is now. To encourage ourselves, let us all say, be the light. Be the, be the, light. Light. Be the light. Be the light. Thank you. For those in religious leadership and faith activists, it is our time to become the light of the world. For those in everyday experiences who simply long for hope, it is our time to allow the Lord to light up our life as we become the light way upon the path of others. It is a time to commit ourselves to bring this light to others by our work to strengthen the health care of this country and world. This is our time to not only see the light, but to be the light. So say it with me now. We must what? Be, be the, the light. 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 When the storm clouds of health care denial surround us, we must what? Be, be the, the light. light. When the darkness of vaccine denials abound around us, we must what? Be, be the, the light. 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 North Carolina legislators deny Medicaid expansion, we must what? Be the light. light. Until our country is poised to instate universal health care for all, we must be the light. light. As we move forward with the work of the Faith Health Caucus of North Carolina Medicaid, Medicare for All Coalition, we say to all upon our path, we shall become the points of light in the universe to guide the way. Our final word of commitment to ourselves is to exclaim what? Be the Be light. 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 Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to say thank you to all of you all who have uh, shared with us tonight. This has been a wonderful occasion. And um, what I would like to do at this point is before I close, um, I'd like to have uh, someone from the Faith Health Caucus uh, give an announcement. Well, actually, the Medicare for All Coalition, uh, Stacy Borello, if she's online, could you just tell us uh, just a, a word of direction where we can go from here in terms of our monthly meetings? Uh, we already gave you information about the Faith Health Caucus, but uh, Stacy, would you just share briefly with us about the Faith Health um, Medicare for All Coalition and where we're going? Thank you so much for inviting me to, to say just a few words. Um, I have really felt enriched by the all of the reflections and prayers shared here tonight in the spirit of uplifting healthcare for all as a, as a human right and as a basic human need and as a way we care for each other. So I'm just so grateful to be part of this community and, and to hear all of our faith leaders who have, have joined us tonight to share these words and these reflections and these um, imperatives, these moral imperatives that we hold so close to our hearts. And thank you, Reverend Floyd Wicker, for just inviting me to say a few words about the, the North Carolina Medicare for All Coalition. I have uh, put some links in the chat just a few minutes ago. 
um, if you are interested in getting involved with the, the work that we are doing, um, one way to get involved is to join our email list and sign on to our letter to Congress. And there's a link for that in the chat. And our letter lays out a lot of the, the reasons um, and the, the kind of the, the thinking behind why we need healthcare for all in our, in our communities, in our society. And to, to really get involved and kind of meet, meet the people who are doing the work and, and find your place in the work, one of the, a, a great way to start is by registering for our next orientation. We hold these orientations on Zoom once a month and it's a brief meeting, it's about 45 minutes and it's a great place to ask questions. They're usually kind of small intimate groups and great place to ask questions or just to to, under, uh, to get an overview of our meetings and kind of what we stand for and the, the work that we've done already and the direction that we're going next. And um, we hold those the first Wednesdays of the month at 6.15 p.m. And, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll add it one more time to the chat. It was, it was uh, added a few minutes ago, but I'll add it one more time. The link for our next orientation, which is on Wednesday, December 1st at 6.15 p.m. And I'll also put our coalition email address in the chat as well. If anyone has any questions tonight or would like to partner on any events or would like to join as a, as a coalition uh, member organization, I know Chris had introduced us very early on at the beginning of our, of our talk tonight and had talked about how we have more than 40 diverse groups across the state that are now part of the coalition fighting for healthcare justice together, but we're always looking for new ways to engage and new partnerships. Um, and it could be, you know, anything from, you know, um, you know, a, sm a small group to a larger group to any sort of, of gathering who would like to join in this work with us. So we welcome you. And um, again, I'll add the, the link again for the next orientation session and our coalition email address so you can contact us in the chat box. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'd like to do one last thing before we leave, uh, because again, I would hate for us to get together and you not have an opportunity to reach out to someone that is on this uh, virtual line tonight. Because, you know, there's a, a word in theology, uh, the teleos, objective or goal. So the spirit has an objective and a goal. So we didn't just gather tonight just to hear wonderful words and great prayers. We have a mission, we have a goal, there's a direction that we are trying to go. So I like to give a space for if you want to communicate with someone in the chat, uh, if you wanna just uh, like Spencer Bradford, I don't know you, but I really enjoyed your words. So if we could just, if that's okay with you all, uh, exchange emails or contacts, you don't have to, uh, but I just wanna give space because uh, my closing words is there's an African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you wanna go far, go with others. So I need you and you need me. We need each other in this fight for equity and justice. So I'm, I'm just going to give a little space for that right now. I see you, Reverend Fanta. Um, Spencer, uh, uh, Spencer Bradford, um, could you send me your uh, name in the chat or email? Because I really want to uh, learn that quote. Uh, Hovel, that's all I got. <laughs> Reverend Cheryl Walker, thank you so much for your prayers. And uh, we don't even know where, where are you, where are you, uh, Reverend Walker? I'm a little informal, but. Um, I'm in Wilmington. Wilmington, okay, so, all right. All the way at the ocean, at the end of the earth. <laughs> okay, all right, so we're family and that's what we're about. That's what we wanna be about. So uh, Joe Blankenship, I talked with him the other day. So good to see him online tonight, Dr. Sadler. Uh, Reverend Fanta, I've never met you, but thank you so much for being online tonight. Reverend Coles, Sandy Irving, good friend, member of the Faith Health Caucus. Have you all exchanged enough? 
Yes, no. Okay. Well, listen, thank you all again. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you and give us the love that we talked about tonight. This we pray in the many names of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bless you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. All right. So good to see you. I think we're going to close out with a song. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, glory, Hela, Lila, Kalaki, I must be sure you need him now. Oh, oh, sure you need him now. You must be sure you need him now. Oh, glory, Hela, Lila, Kalaki, you must be sure you need him now. We need him every day and every hour. Oh, glory, Hela, Lila, Kalaki, you must be sure you need him now. Oh, oh, sure you need him now. You must be sure you need him now. Oh, do we never need a long before? You must be sure you need him now. We need him every day and every hour. Ah. everyone safe travels you're going home or at home